Thank you very much for uh, giving me the chance to uh, talk about our messenger RNA-based vaccine studies against SARS-CoV-2. Um, a number of years ago, uh, Drew Wiseman and uh, I developed a messenger RNA-based uh, vaccine platform that we've been using for um, uh, the vaccine development against infectious diseases, and we recently started some cancer vaccine-related studies as well. So let me uh, show you a cartoon about the platform and just uh, tell you very briefly about uh, mRNA production. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the messenger RNA is in vitro transcribed from a, a plasmid DNA template uh, that uh, uh, has a, the antigen coding sequence. Uh, it also encodes the five prime and three prime UTR elements of the messenger RNA, and these are absolutely critical for uh, uh, mRNA's increased stability and uh, translatability. Uh, the plasmid also encodes a one hand and one nucleotide long uh, optimized poly ATL that further stabilizes the RNA. Uh, so once uh, we perform the in vitro transcription reaction with the, the four building blocks of the uh, RNA and the RNA polymerase and the linearized plasmid DNA template, uh, we add the five prime cap one structure uh, to, the, to the RNA that further stabilizes it and it, it's also critical for high level of uh, translation. It's been known for a long time that uh, RNA polymerase uh, makes mistakes during messenger RNA synthesis and the byproducts are primarily short double-stranded RNAs and the short double-stranded RNAs as well as uridine are recognized as pathogen-associated molecular patterns by the immune system and they can induce uh, unwanted immune responses such as very strong uh, inflammatory responses, type 1 interferon production and uh, eventually the, uh, the inhibition uh, of translation so uh, from the messenger protein production from the messenger RNA so obviously this is something that we don't want uh, so we uh, uh, purify the in vitro transcribed messenger RNA to get rid of this double standard RNA contamination and uh, we also replace uridines with one methyl pseudouridine that is uh, uh, that, that uh, further contributes to the high uh, translatability of the messenger RNA. Once we make the RNA uh, that is purified and nucleoside modified, it gets formulated into lipid nanoparticles, and these special lipid nanoparticles uh, uh, protect RNA from extracellular uh, degradation, and they, uh, it also helps to induce uh, uh, potent immune responses. So we call this vaccine platform nucleoside modified mRNA LMP vaccine. And um, I just listed um, uh, some of the advantages of using this uh, vaccine platform. Besides uh, potency and safety, I'd like to mention that uh, uh, the, it's very uh, important uh, that uh, uh, the production of these mRNA vaccines is very, uh, is very simple, similar to DNA vaccines. It's completely, uh, these vaccines are synthetic. Uh, the production is uh, sequence independent, so it's possible to use the same infrastructure and the same strategy to produce any uh, RNA vaccines. And uh, there are at least three big RNA companies uh, that can produce uh, millions of those of vaccines uh, if uh, necessary. Uh, so uh, we use this vaccine platform to design um, and produce um, uh, four uh, different RNA vaccines. Uh, in the first round, just four different uh, vaccines against SARS-CoV-2. We would like to target the uh, spike uh, glyco uh, glycoprotein of this coronavirus uh, and uh, we designed four constructs, a full length uh, uh, S-protein encoding uh, mRNA. The second construct, uh, it's also a full length but with a mutated furin cleavage site. Uh, we have a th uh, third construct uh, that has two mutations um, in the uh, S2 region, uh, a, a valine and um, lysine uh, uh, were mutated to, to prolines. Uh, and we expect that um, uh, in these two constructs, the Fury mutant and the 2P construct, we can keep the uh, we can keep the uh, spike protein uh, pre-fusion state, and we can hopefully induce uh, better immune responses compared to the Y-type construct. And uh, we generated a fourth construct as well. This is a, a short one and codes only the receptor binding domain of, uh, of S protein. So the second one and the fourth one are already in mice. And I can share you some very, very limited um, immunogenicity data. So the experimental setup uh, was very simple. Eight week old biopsy mice were injected intramuscularly or intradermally with a single dose of uh, 3 or 30 microgram of mRNA LMP vaccine and uh, um, 
control group received the fire from luciferase encoding RNA and uh, 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 we keep bleeding based mice uh, but I can share you uh, some uh, ELISA data uh, uh, at a very early time point two weeks post immunization so after a single uh, intramuscular immunization with uh, 30 microgram mRNA LMPs uh, we could induce pretty uh, robust um, uh, immune responses as, as measured by uh, S-protein specific uh, um, ELISA. Uh, so the ELISA titers are in the hundreds of the thousands. Uh, that is actually pretty good uh, for uh, 14 days post immunization. Uh, and the lower dose 3 microgram also induced uh, pretty uh, decent uh, ELISA titers. Uh, we obtained uh, similar data after intradermal immunization with 30 microgram. Uh, so uh, the take home from these experiments is that uh, the, the vaccine is certainly, or actually both uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccines are immunogenic uh, in mice after intramuscular and intradermal immunization, but it will be much more important uh, to uh, <clears throat> look at the neutralization titers. So Paul Bates is uh, performing uh, pseudovirus neutralization assays, uh, um, and then this will be absolutely critical. Uh, we would like to follow antibody titers in these injected mice to look at the durability of antibody responses. In previous studies with influenza and Zika vaccines, uh, we uh, demonstrated that uh, this vaccine platform induced uh, durable antibody responses many times after a, a single immunization. Um, we would like to expand these studies, and um, uh, I've been working with Michela Locci uh, on a bunch of different projects, and uh, we would like to team up and um, look at the T follicular helper cell, germinal center B cell, memory B cell, and plasma cell uh, responses in the context of um, uh, the, new corona, the, the, the new coronavirus. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it would be very important to demonstrate the protective efficacy of, this, uh, of these vaccines. Uh, it won't be that easy because the best animal model would be a human ACE2 knocking a mouse. Uh, but uh, these mice are not available now, um, so we will probably go with a um, viral challenge in white type animals, probably in white type Bob C mice. This is what we did uh, in our Zika studies, and actually we could uh, uh, detect uh, differences between the uh, uh, Zika vaccine and, uh, and the control vaccine immunized animals. So we hope to get similar data uh, in these experiments as well, and uh, in a week or two. Uh, we will start some large animal studies with uh, Bart Haynes uh, at, uh, from, from Duke University. Uh, we've been uh, working with Bart for a, for a long time, uh, uh, primarily on the development of uh, HIV vaccines. So basically, uh, this is what I could show you, and this is just a small uh, team of people uh, who generated um, uh, the data I, uh, I showed you. Uh, and again, we plan to uh, uh, expand and uh, again, Paul Bates is included um, in, in uh, the new studies, uh, Michaela, and uh, some more basic science studies. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to expand and uh, uh, start collaborations with multiple people. Thank you very much.